our CJN was supposed to be arraigned before the CCT. And the legal community rose against such because the issue is that the processes and the procedure was completely wrong. Today, the jurisprudence is that you cannot try a judicial officer without referring the matter first and foremost to NJC, especially in the infraction. If the infraction arises from doing his duty or in the course of occupying a position that the Constitution has given to him, you cannot take him to court or to any particular tribunal without referring that particular infraction to NJC. The present case is completely the opposite. Our CJN is being referred to CTCT uh, without ensuring that that matter is first and foremost reported to NJC. And of course, you see the legal gymnastics that is playing out. In the few days or a few weeks ahead, we get to know whether the court has jurisdiction in the first place. So we insist on institutions in Nigeria to be very independent. remembered by a large segment of Nigerian society and the international community as a social crusader without a questionable NGO. As a complete human being, Ganifa Waimi, while alive, meant different things to different people. He will be remembered today as an entrepreneur, a loving father, a community man, a devout Muslim, a teacher of law and trainer of lawyers and senior advocates. But most importantly, as a philanthropist with uncommon make of human kindness. Many people will not know Chief Ganifa Emi's large attendance when it comes to giving to the poor. He does not live and does not believe only in talk shop. When you go to him with a problem, he will solve the legal aspect in court. He will solve the poverty aspect of it from his pocket. By reason of his first set of attributes, we must not forget that Chief Ganifa Oemi has always fought for the independence of the National Electoral Commission in Nigeria and the right of Nigerians to form political party of their choice. And this eventually led to the formation of poorer political parties in Nigeria, contrary to the wish of the then powers that be. You go to court and you are making submissions. I refer to the case of court, you are talking about court of appeal decision on the same matter. And when you have spoken for 30 minutes, they get up and say, My Lord, that decision my lady referred refer to was overruled last week by, by the Supreme Court. And by one sentence, they will demolish all the arguments you have presented in 30 minutes. The Nigerian Wiki Law Report, is the one biggest contribution that leveled the playing field for all practicing lawyers in this country. Because it made the of the Supreme Court available to everybody. To recall Jovenel's question, who is custodians if so custodians? Who is to guard the guards themselves? The same inquiry can be made of the electoral empire, umpire. For without an unbiased, non-partisan umpire, it will be pretty difficult, if not actually impossible, to attain a free, fair, and credible election in this country. Yet, the task should not be assigned to only INEC, since the rest of the population has an even greater role to play in achieving this noble objective. In further considering this issue, we intend to begin by observing the pivotal role that INEC is expected to play towards the desiderator of free, fair, credible, and transparent elections in Nigeria before considering the role of its predecessors and finally expatiating on what needs to be done to uphold the independence of INEC. I now come to the subtopic of the import of independent superintendence of the electoral process. It is self-evident that pursuant to the Nemo Judex in Cosasua maxim, 
The electoral referee cannot act as both a player or participant in the contest, as well as rule enforcer in the game of political power. Hence the necessity to insulate it from the rumble and tumble of electioneering and struggle for attainment of political power. The referee should not be a player on the field. His role is to adjudicate, award penalty kicks, uh, fouls, and whatever. But when you have uh, a referee being the 11th or 12th member of an, another team, there is a cause for worry because its independence will have been compromised. The man who goes to court and loses will shout, where is justice in the land? The man who wins will say, thank God justice has been done. And that is why in court, you have the figurine of Themis, the lady of justice, blindfolded, score, uh, sword on one hand and scales on the other. But some of us say that maybe the time is now ripe for the lady of justice to peep through her blindfold so she can see that people are not equal and she should teach the scales of justice to compensate for the underprivileged. Now people might not agree because it's a pretense that we are equal before the law. The man who has more money will hire the most brilliant senior advocates and the one who has nothing will left and for God. He can't afford to brief a lawyer to go to court. So there's a lot of injustice. And I will plead that the young lawyers go to read the lecture that I said I gave in 1972 to the MBB. Is judiciary still the last hope of the common man? Because in that lecture, we established that the judiciary also is part of a political system. And uh, it's a very interesting piece, but we go with the shibboleth, that judiciary is the last hope of the common man. It's a shibboleth. While institutions are an important element in a democracy, the independence of mind, moral integrity, of functionaries of the electoral body, and their non-partisan disposition could well be decisive in ensuring a free fair and credible electoral process, especially in an emerging democracy such as ours. So it is quite understandable that uh, people are raising eyebrows about a national commissioner in INEC claiming that first they said she was a blood relation. I don't know what that means. Are you either a relation or not a relation? What has blood got to do with it? On social media, you are advised on what to do during this time. Don't stay out late at night. Don't argue on politics with anyone. Uh, you know, so that you survive the elections. I'm not a pessimist. Uh, in fact, I'm an incurable optimist. I pray, hope, and wish that things will not go all right. But with Nigeria, never say never. Anything can happen at any time. I will just comment on two areas. The first area, sir, is the area of 90 political parties <laughs> and 71 presidential candidates. For me, if there is any sign of unseriousness, of no direction, it is this. Like somebody has said earlier, sir, I am a committed advocate of a two-party system, where one will be a little to the right and possibly a little to the left. And therefore, it will be possible for people to identify on the basis of ideology. As of today, if we are going to be sincere with ourselves, their political parties are nothing but special purpose vehicles. For people, first of all, to identify their interests, and then to situate that interest within a special purpose vehicle to actualize the interest. That is all we have today. And there's a world of difference between political parties and the special purpose vehicle. What we have today is 91 special purpose vehicles. And that is where we have about 71 presidential candidates. I don't know why we didn't have 91. 
The second point, sir, is briefly on the issue of guidelines and the non-signing of the Electoral Act. And uh, I want to very, with very profound respect, differ here to the views expressed by the August lecturer to the extent that INEC shouldn't have incorporated whatever guideline that was contained in that act since it was not passed. Now under the constitution, INEC has the power to manage, to organize an election. And I believe by practice and by interpretation of this section, year in year out, they have been formulating guidelines to cover the election. And when you look at a good number of the election petition judgments that we have had, there is a consensus of legal opinion that the INEC guidelines constitute a subsidiary legislation which has the force of law as well as the substantive law. So to this extent, sir, filling the loophole or the gap that is left by not signing that electoral act, I believe is a good step in the right direction. A lot of cases were lost in 2015 because they were founded on the hard register, which the Supreme Court said was unknown to our electoral act. The second point size this. INEC will not be composed by angels from heaven. Human beings will be members of INEC. But there is a need for a national orientation in this country for us to begin to trust ourselves. There is no trust in this nation. And therefore, meanings are read to every step that is taken, either by individuals or by an institution. This nation must graduate from producing strong men into producing strong institutions. Only institutions build the destiny of nations. Strong men will come and pass. And lastly, sir, we cannot be the same because we are not from the same source. The fingers we have here, we have five in my left hand, and they are various sizes and length. If God, the perfect master, can produce this, and they are not of the same size, then we must concede our individual inadequacies and make provisions for them. Life is not about being compatible. Rather, it is about how we can manage our incompatibility. This country must derive a means of managing our incompatibilities in this country. I look forward to the day when this country will produce a hero, not because it's an Ausafulani man, not because it's a Yoruba man, not because it's an Igbo man, but because it's a Nigerian. On the number of political parties in the country, with profound respect, is rather dangerous. When you talk of a little to the left and a little to the right, what of the left? What of the right? Now, if you want to know if you want to study the proliferation of political parties in Nigeria, it was a deliberate policy by the PDP government of Obasanjo and now being continued by the APC to have so many political parties by lowering the standards and not really providing serious conditionalities. What did they then do, like APC and the Atiku people are doing now, is to rent and pay some of these political parties that exist among members of families to now endorse them. I'm sure you are, you know, you are witnessing endorsement of some so-called major political parties in Nigeria. I thought what should be discussing really is how to ensure that every political party in Nigeria comply with Section 224 of the Constitution that provides that the aims and objectives and manifestos of every political party in Nigeria shall reflect 
and conform with chapter 2 of the Constitution. And I'm sure you are aware that chapter 2 is the most important part of that Constitution. And contrary to the judgments of our courts, that that chapter is not justiciable. Every politician, every governor, every president shall swear to an oath where he or she will say, I hereby undertake to preserve chapter 2 of the Constitution. So please, I thought we should be uh, defying this debate instead of calling for a fascist state where you have a PDP or a, an APC government throwing the rule of law to the dustbin and giving the impression that they control INEC. If you want to talk of independence of INEC, please go and read the Wales and the Lemo reports. Both panel, presidential panel, recommended that the chair and members of the INEC, their appointment should be done by advertisement, lay down conditions, all those who may be requirements will go to NJC for recommendation to the president. None of the big political parties that have been in power wants INEC to be independent. So don't let's kid about it. The other one, sir, on yes, any of political briefs. Again, I think we must warn lawyers here. We're already in trouble. Yes, sir. It is not the money of candidates. Candidates, no candidate, and I've handled a few. I have ne ne never met a candidate who can dip his hand to his own pocket, Mr. Legerson, and pay you 200 or 500 million dollars from his pocket. The money is from state fund. And that is why some of us are going to be in trouble. The courts have decided that election petitions, the litigants, are private people, not the government. So if I hand you a case for a do state, as you said, if Adams had deep his hand to the state coffers, you know I won't take it. And the late Ghani will never allow you to take such money. So what are we learning here? So our lawyers who are taking hundreds and billions are warned that you may be in trouble if the funds are traced to the accounts of state government. The other one, sir, frivolous appeals, frivolous appeals. It is again not correct to say that only litigants or politicians are the ones causing election petitions. No, we prefer respect. There are lawyers now, senior lawyers, senior lawyers, who send people to those who have lost election. We are going to handle your election petition for you. Please. And that is why the Supreme Court now, very good. The Supreme Court now penalizes senior lawyers who bring up frivolous appeals. Because when you lose a case, your client will ask you, what do we do now? Without reading the judgment, you say we are going on appeal. And of course, lawyers don't lose cases as professors. Everybody they will say, it's the client that lose. You say, how much do I pay? The most dangerous part, we must disclose this here. There are some lawyers who are mercenaries. They never sit down with you to write briefs. They only appear in courts for purpose of reaching out to the judges. It's happening. The other one, which you must know, about this business of election petitions, most litigants who have lost do not want to waste their money any longer. Lawyers will assure them we are bound to win. Once we are dealt with the procedure, we must, as legal practitioners and members of the profession, save the judiciary of our country by insisting that those allegations be sent to the NJC. And this is not the first time it has happened. During the Jesse Salami uh, Casino Anu in Boglio, the chief justice has to step aside to allow his deputy to preside over the matter. Because the most dangerous aspect, I must tell you, that is going on. Between now, yesterday and now, our law is in trouble. 
matters that have been settled by the Supreme Court in the Sarakia Farland case, they are being reopened now. The question of appearance of an accused, the question of service, it came up in Sarakia's case. Once you are aware, you have been served. Again, we are raising it afresh. I just read one disturbing one this morning. The National Industrial Court has weathered in to say the chief justice shall not be arrested. Who is talking of arrest? What is the local standard of National Industrial Court on the affairs of a child? We are now being told that the chief justice is an employee who should be protected by the National uh, 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 Industrial Court. The other one, and I hope for all of us, because Professor Yobode has talked about equality before the law. I was very happy yesterday when I discovered that a case that was filed in the federal court yesterday was processed yesterday, assigned yesterday, heard yesterday, and another was made yesterday. In the last 20 years, it has never happened in any court in Nigeria. You can quote me. Because I go out to all the courts. So please, let us know that we are sending dangerous precedents on this matter. And that is why sentiment should not come in. When I spoke that the proper procedure has not been followed, and that this government should withdraw the frivolous charge, I was not saying it, I wasn't talking of the substance of the case. Because for me, if you catch an arm robber, red handed and you decide to shop off his hand, you have lost your case. You still have to take him to court. And that is what should happen in this case. We must go through the proper channel, which is what my learning friend, Austin Alleghen, alluded to. Rule of law, let us go to the proper channel for dealing with complaints against judges. I can tell you here that since we came to INEC, the problem is no longer independent because right from the time of Professor Jagar down to Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, we all can agree in line with what even um, uh, FSB said that the year of democracy can only be cured by more democracy. The fact that the elections conducted in both process, in terms of process and outcome, are of a remarkable departure from what we used to have in our country before. And that's how nation will make progress. We must have some to build on. But I can declare to you now that the greatest threat to our democracy all this period and even now is the elite of Nigeria. What they tell you in public is different from what they do in private. The stomach is nothing but the museum of horror. What they are planning is to undermine everything that we are doing in INEC. That's what they are planning to do. Recall that when we came on board and we agreed that we are going to compile a biometric register of voters for the Nigerian people. They resisted it. The question is, why should a uh, politician be resisting having a good uh, register? A credible register is the foundation of any credible election anywhere in the world. The Nigerian people, and of course, the kind of leadership of Jaga from his own civil society background, we stood tall and mighty in defense of democracy and the rule of law. And we had a biometric uh, compiled register in line with the Justice Muhammad Way's recommendation. Because we didn't, you see, we know that our progress. We, we have to challenge them and do the right one. We have the opportunity. And so when the question was asked, why am I doing what I am doing? Every time I do the things I do, God is always happy. We are in heaven. That somebody is doing some of the things he'd be asking us to do. Because you may, you may be posing, uh, coming to the public to say this and all of that, but when you are given power, that's where we know truly the kind of person you are. Because power does not change you, but it reveals who you are. So in 2019, let me assure Nigerians from what I know from our system, that the issue of election day logistics that have been talked about, Late arrival of men and materials. All those matters have been dealt with from the efforts that we have made over time. Oshun State, 
forget about the second ocean and the issue that we raised had to do with people being prevented from accessing police units. That is the job of security. Because in the conduct of election, it is a multi-stakeholder responsibility of INEC, security, the judiciary, political parties that are candidates, the media, civil society, and other key stakeholders. In that exercise, that was a failure of security. As you also saw, when I was asked to go and conduct and supervise election in River State, the Fanga constituency, we saw a show of shame. We saw a show of shame. And we didn't hesitate to cancel that exercise and put it on hold till on the 2nd of March. And so, at our own level, we will do what we need to do. But we need Nigerian people to be conscious of what is going on. Because the buying of votes is a debasement is a debasement of the ballot. Today is now a do or die mentality. The highest paid business in Nigeria today is elected, elected uh, public uh, office. So everybody is moving in there. And so in 2019, I want to say here that INEC, by virtue of the power conferred on it in the, in the Electoral Act, does not in breach of the substantive law contained in the Constitution, we will do what we need to do to give meaning and purpose to the ballot. Because if vote do not count, people will lose faith in democracy. If vote do not count, then of course, the instrumental benefits derived over by the electorate as a basis for embracing democracy will not be available to them. Because those who are elected will not have a sense of responsibility and accountability because the fear of the people is the beginning of responsible leadership.